so to understand how these observation telescopes work, we have to work at what the limiting factor is, how sharp an image you can get. That's right. I mean, presumably you'd like a spy satellite that can read newspapers over someone's head, or a satellite that looks out into space and can spot the freckles on the, the face of an alien and a, around a planet in Alpha Centauri. We're not going to get that. Why can't you see things that brilliantly? Look, it actually all has to go back to telescope optics and really the principle of light. Because that's all we're looking at is light, no matter whether it's ultraviolet waves, optical, or infrared, as you said, to spot your favorite alien. It is about how light travels through a diffraction or a grating or a medium and ends up on our detector. Now, that detector could be our eyeball or a camera. Probably a camera in space. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so um, the fundamental problem is that all the electromagnetic radiation, all this light is made of waves. That's right. And waves don't go exactly where you tell them to do. We, we sometimes draw rays of light. But he, here's a classic example. You have a, a, a metal with a, a hole cut in yes. it, and you send waves in. Now, you might imagine that the rays would just go straight through, and this is a detector at the end. You just see a little bar of light there and blackness everywhere else. But in practice, what happens is because they're waves, they spread out and That's they go right. through a hole. And this is called diffraction. You can see it with water waves. That's right. Um, and they go into the mouth of a harbour. You also see it with sound waves. You can talk to someone even though you can't see them because the sound waves can bend through That's a doorway right. or go through walls and the like. And so this bending, it's also why you can, for example, get mobile phone reception inside a building. That the mobile phone rays can will diffract through the windows and yep. curve through things and also sometimes penetrate the walls a little bit. So in some ways that diffraction of waves is very good. Otherwise, you couldn't get mobile phones <laughs> in buildings and you couldn't yell to your friend around a corner. But it's not so good for telescope optics because it means that the light tends to bend. That's right. So you don't get the perfectly sharp image. The image is blurred out by the light bending as it goes into the mouth of the telescope. Exactly. As that light comes through, and as you said, as you get these slits, it slates to bend over the case. Now, we can calculate kind of how big it is, but really what matters is how it spreads, as he said. This nice little point, imagine we had a little star shining through this. Well, it doesn't end up as a little perfect circle, right, Paul? Yes, because you've got to have the aperture of your telescope, That's right. which if it's a long, thin telescope, could be the front or it could be the, the, the mirror. mirror at the back or something. But any telescope's going to have a finite size. And that finite size is going to cause the light to blur out. We talk right. about the physics behind this in the uh, another one of our courses. Yes. But and there's a, an equation here. I'm sorry to have the equation, but basically it's um, we've seen it in the previous slide and this slide that the bending in angle is going to be roughly speaking the this is the Greek letter lambda, which is the four, wavelength of whatever right. it is you're looking at, radio wave, <laughs> X-ray, divided by d, which is the diameter of your hole, like your right. mirror of your telescope, the lens of your binoculars, or whatever it's going to be. And as you said, it, we're going to keep seeing this equation, because yes, it is an equation we try and avoid, but it is the one that dictates almost everything that has to do with what we can see. Again, whether that's seeing down on Earth or seeing that in space. So this is the fundamental thing we're going to have to explore, because when we actually put into it, it really is what we can see, which ends up being the resolution. How well our spy satellite can see or how far we can see away in space depends on what color of light we're looking at and how big we can build it or operate it. Now this is the theoretical best sharpness That's right. you can get an image. Now most telescopes would be worse than this because the optics aren't perfect and the telescope may be vibrating or shaking or something. But let's assume you spend a lot of money and get really the highest possible quality optics you can't do better than this. That, and that's, this is the fundamental point. As we're about to explore, this is, as he said, the best case scenario. So in reality, it's always a little bit worse. So On we'll... Earth, it's often a lot worse because the atmosphere <laughs> blurs things exactly. very badly. But for a space telescope where you don't have an atmosphere to worry about, um, the people who do the optics are usually pretty good at pushing down to this limit. That's right. There's no point in making your optics 100 times better than this because you're still going to get blurred because of the light wave nature of light. That's so right. So normally if you're designing a telescope, you say, well, that's how good we can get. Let's see if we can polish our optics so beautifully that it matches that. That's right. And this is called the diffraction limit, the best possible limit we can get of resolving or diffracting that light yep. through our mirror. Now what we want is this, this is a blurring angle. It's how much things are blurred by. So the bigger the angle, the worse things are. Things are blurred over a large area. I think we're going to talk about that in a bit. That's right. Um, 
what we want is the smallest possible blurring angle, which, and the way to get that would be to have a small wavelength or a big diameter. So a really big telescope operating at very short wavelengths like ultraviolet will give you really That's sharp right. images. Every little tiny telescope working at radio wavelengths and you'll be lucky if you know even half of the sky something's in. And so this is the trade-off we're going to have to explore is how do we look at different colors of light, what are the benefits, and what sort of telescope do we need to be the ideal case scenario? Because as we've talked about previously, we're not going to get 800 million billion dollars to build a 50 meter telescope to go look at ultraviolet light. So we have to do with what we can to get the best possible image for the best possible money.